Salt Lake City to take on the best Florida has to offer. A 40-game win streak is on the line for the Tornadoes homestanding here in Boca Raton as we get going in game number three of our triple header. It's Bingham and Booker T. Washington in our finale. Bowl series. Our triple header comes to an end with Bingham taking on Booker T. Washington. It's cooled off just a couple of degrees, but still a beautiful Saturday here in Boca Raton. Thanks for joining us once again with Craig Hobart, Jason Benetti along with you. And uh, we saw game two, Florida team wins. Game one, the Florida team wins. What does Bingham have to do to come in here and change the result for the West Coasters? Jason, en route to a 5A state title. Bingham fielded a stingy defense. And the guy in the middle of that defense was senior linebacker Daniel Longy, a three-year starter. He brings a very physical presence to that defensive unit. He's a downhill run stuffer with a nose for the football, over 100 tackles on the year, as well as four interceptions and four sacks. He's a very active player. And if they're going to shut down that Booker T. Washington run game, he's going to need to be a key factor. They're led Booker T. Washington by a skilled running back, Mark Walton. The ESPN 300 prospect, Miami Hurricanes verbal commit. He's a decisive runner who can hit the hole and create big plays. He's an every down type of back. He could also be utilized in the passing game, a good receiver, and he could make you miss as well. He's got some elusivity. He runs low to the ground behind his pads. He's difficult to tackle. He will be the guy that this offense will begin with as they want to establish the run game. Number 14 running back in the country, 134 in the ESPN 300, a commit to Miami all the way back to last September. And as we saw in the first two games, these have been close games. They've been within two touchdowns. You take a look at the USA Today Sports Super 25. And Bishop Gorman, that number one team, is the only loss for Bingham with that one defeat in the eight position. They have played up this year and shown very well. It was that one loss to Bishop Gorman, but they went into their home turf and played him very tough, Jason. That was not... Uh, Bishop Gorman was lucky to kind of get out of there with the win as Bingham gave them all they can handle. As Tim Harris Jr., the head coach in his first year, continuing the program's trajectory with 40 consecutive wins. And on the other side, the Bingham Miners playing their that. final game for their head coach, Let's Dave Pack, a 15-year veteran. He teaches driver's ed at the high school, and he's in his final game as the head coach has decided to retire after this game. And what a way to go out with a win over 40 consecutive victories of Booker T. Washington. <laughs> Off we go in the opening kickoff. Drives the returner back for Booker T. Washington, Shaquille Green. He'll be a key wide receiver for this team. And he'll be thrown to by the senior quarterback, Maurice Alexander, a dual threat, Craig. Yeah, FIU commit. This is a young man who took the range from a very talented quarterback in Treon Harris, who's currently with the Florida Gators. And he stepped in, and early on, they really depended on the run game in Mark Walton. But as the season progressed, he really grew into that leadership role and is now controlling that offense. Alexander about 51%. He will run the ball. He's got Walton next to him. A lot of motion here, including Vaquan Small, a top 200 wide receiver. Now an empty backfield. First down for Alexander to throw. A good zip on it. Has a completion and a first down across the 35 to a spinning Shaquille Green. Just short of the 40-yard line. Gain of 18 in the first play for the Tornadoes. Maurice Alexander, this is a young man who he's got a good arm. He can make throws from the pocket. Talking to Tim Harris Jr., the head coach, he said that he even feels that Maurice Alexander from the pocket is a little bit better passer than Treon Harris, who led this offense a year ago. Strong passer in his own right. They bunch the formation five wide again. Green all alone at the top of your screen. Now keep it on the ground with Alexander. Give him one. Second down and nine coming up. Hit by Daniel Nasio, a senior who they say has a great nose for the football. Take a look at our impact players on this side of the ball. 
Well, for both teams, defensive players, for Bingham, it's Parker Workman, defensive end, highly productive, 16 sacks on the year. Booker T. Washington's going to need to account for him on the edge. And then for Booker T. Washington, watch O.C. Rose in the secondary, young man who's always around the football. You can tell on film he plays the game with a lot of intensity, a lot of passion. See a lot of movement at the line. Longy showing blitz. They've got a free runner. Alexander with a hit down the field of a quad small. Boy, Workman was coming hard. And Small gets 34 out of it first down. A nice job by Alexander just hanging in the pocket. And Small's going to create some separation. And if Alexander could have let him just a little bit more, Small's had to slow down and go up and get it. They might have had even a touchdown, but a big completion here early on for this Booker T. Washington. No sign of Walton yet. He is in the backfield. The senior tailback. Here is Walton switching direction. Workman got a push. Longy as well gained a two second out. Longy has been a key part of this defense for several seasons. As I mentioned at the top, a three year starter, and he just gets around the football. Over 100 tackles. A couple of offers Utah, Utah State, Nevada, Reno, some of the programs interested in that young man, uncommitted at the time. Alexander using his legs, Longi's after him, and he's ushered out of bounds by Nasio, the senior linebacker. They've been very active, those two linebackers, so far it's certain short. One of the things they had last year in this Booker T. Washington program with Treon Harris, their quarterback, is he was just dynamic, almost a magician, difficult to corral. Maurice Alexander, not quite that athletic, but you see he has the athleticism when they get pressure to be able to create second chances or at least get some positive yardage as he did there. Blitz coming again. Workman got the hands up, and it's incomplete, looking for Walton down the edge. So fourth down and three on the way. What do you do? They've got a pretty good kicker. Be surprised to try to get some points on the board. Saw Miami Central do the same thing. Opening drive, 35-yard field goal in our second game. Alexander is staying on the field. Here on the edge of the red zone, try to go for points, empty backfield again. And timeout, Booker T. Washington a little bit out of sorts. They'll talk timeout. it over. First timeout of our third game, Booker T. Washington on the first drive, trying to get some points. Harris Jr. leading Booker T. Washington, 40 straight wins coming into this game. A team that's seen an offensive surge this year. Smallest output in any game, 19 points. A very strong offensive team that put up 54 against the Bulls school in the state title game a couple of weeks ago. And they'll go for it on fourth down out of the timeout. Fourth and three. They've got to get to the 17 for the senior quarterback and the FIU commit, Alexander. He's flushed. Alexander with room decides to tuck it and has the first down in the arms of Longy. Gain of four, needed three, move the markers. The number four, 49, Langi Tufua comes off the edge, but he does not maintain containment, and he allows Alexander to get off to the edge, and Daniel Longi was coming in pursuit, but could not cover enough ground before Alexander was able to pick up the first down and convert. Fourth down try. Now, in high school, that might have been on the edge for a lot of schools to automatically go for. But Booker T. Washington, Jose Borregales, he's kicked a 44-yarder this year, had good range. But the, the call to go for it paid off as they now hand off to Mark Walton. Walton tripped up by Parker Workman, typically a pass rusher, flowing down the defensive line to stop him after a gain of one. Second down, nine. And in the beginning, we, early 
I talked about the stingy defense. What did I mean? This was a defense that held 11 points this year under seven points. They also put up four shutouts throughout the year. In their last six games, no opponent scored more than six points on them. So this is really a defense that made it very difficult for opposing offenses to get in the end zone. But right here, right on this first drive against Booker T. Washington, tornadoes are knocking. They've also created points, too. Six defensive touchdowns this year for Bingham. That is a dagger down the sideline to Walton out of the backfield on second down and eight, and he moves it down to the seven-yard line. And getting this to his running back coming out. It's going to match up on the linebacker. You see a nice throw by Alexander and a good adjustment by the ESPN 300 running back Walton. Really, I mean, talented young man who can stay on the field in all situations, whether as a runner or utilize him in a passing game. Alexander, the hard count to check on the defensive line of Bingham. Quick hit to the outside and dropped by Darius Scott, the sophomore wide receiver. He was sniffing the end zone and didn't reel the ball in fourth and one. We've, saw, we've seen that a few times. Today, Jason, we've had a game earlier before this, and a couple of those times in a screen, those receivers looking to get downfield, looking to make a play before they finish the completion. It's always important for receivers to look the ball in, tuck it, transition upfield, but you got to make the catch first. So these teams still trying to find their feet again. December 6th, the last time Booker T. Washington played three weeks ago. Fourth and one. Read option for Walton. He stood up and driven back. I don't think he got there. Tafua was there, the senior defensive end. And we'll check the mark. Looks like he's short by yeah, half a yard. They, they got great penetration up front. They, they did not allow that Booker T. Washington offensive line to get any forward surge. And you're just going to see them standing up. The blockers allows those linebackers to get downhill. And Mark Walton, they made contact before he even got to the line of scrimmage. Tafua, Nasio there, Daniel Longhi as well. And Bingham's defense, maybe the strong suit of this team. Gets it to the offense, the senior running back, Cameron Smith, who can catch it out of the backfield. The way they move it down the field typically is on the ground, and they'll have first down with the quarterback, Gehrig, handing off to Smith, who finds a nice seam along the middle of the offensive line to the 15 second and short on the way as Blackman made the stop, gain of eight. See number 13, Kyle Gehrig, and they're happy to have him back. Now, the last time, that Bingham played was they've had a long time off and they've had to shake off some rust. But one of the advantages of that long period off for them was allowing Geary to get healthy. He got hurt in the semis and did not play in the state final, but he's back healthy now after an elbow injury. Smith on the run down to the 19. And part of the goal you would expect in this game is almost like a basketball team that slows it down is to minimize possessions for Bingham today, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. The Miners know they have a good defense, but also what can aid their defense is a ball control offense. Getting physical with this Booker T. Washington team, really trying to use their size, eat up clock, use the ground game, the short passing game, as we've seen here early on. Play clock down to 10. Smith is lit up there. Tried to turn the corner, and Terry Jefferson was waiting. The senior safety with the stop second and long. Nice job getting downhill by Terry Jefferson, a four-year starter. Coach Tim Harris Jr. called him the glue of the defense. He's one of these players that's interchangeable. They can move him around, how to play linebacker in a state championship game. You see him just come up and fill and stick and not allow any forward momentum once he made contact. Talented secondary playing without Devontae Davis, who's sitting out today, an ESPN 300 player. Gearing to the air for the first time. And he's got a connection to his wide receiver, Michael Green, his 28th grab of the year. Those two play basketball together for Bingham as well, and they've got a nine-yard game. I had a chance to call Garrett's first start as a varsity starter. He initially won the job because of his athleticism, but I think much like his counterpart, 
Maurice Alexander, he's really grown into the position to become a more well-rounded player, being able to make plays with his arm as well from the pocket. Third and two, Cameron Smith hit by Tyrone Robinson straight through the offensive line, and it's fourth down. Loss of two on the play, and they loaded the box that time. Uh, great just initial penetration from Robinson. He just gets off the football. Nobody blocks him. Easy play for the three-year starter. Tyrone Robinson gets the defense off the field. And punt time for Jaden Johnson. A strong kicker for Bingham. He'll boot it to Shaquille Green, driven all the way back to the 22-yard line. See if he outkicked his coverage. Green down the sideline to the 35. And overall, it's a net of 38. Booker T. Washington gets it back after this timeout. Bingham and Booker T. Washington. We got a chance to chat with Tim Harris Jr., the Booker T. Washington head coach, on how important this game is. I just think that this is something that can turn high school football right into what college football is turning to now. Having a playoff system and, you know, having the top teams able to play it out for the national championship. And uh, that's something that I think will, will be great for our, for, our, um, for our game at the high school level. You know, we've heard a lot of college football analysts all year and fans talking about how great it is to have the playoff, but little did we expect it would trickle down and have a positive effect on high school football, too. Everybody just loves to see Jason, the best play the best, and Booker T. Washington is a program that's really embraced big stage games, taking on out-of-state opponents. Alexander to throw on first down, and what velocity. That was a meteor to the outside, and Vaquan Small, who he's got for the second time. Game of 10. When Tim Harris Jr. and his father, Tim Harris, Tim Ice Harris, who's now with the Miami Hurricanes, a coach with them, they took this program over. Tim Harris Jr. was saying that was their plan. They wanted to get this program into big-time games, get their players on big-time stages, and he really feels it's helped them throughout their regular season and when they get into these tough Florida State playoffs. Here comes Workman, couldn't contain him. They go down the sideline, Alexander, the deep ball for Green, and Shaquille Green reels it in. There is a flag down on a 46-yard strike. Parker Workman, who we talked about as one of the impact players for that Bingham defense, their sack master, came off the edge unimpeded, but once again, he didn't keep containment, allowed Maurice Alexander to slip outside the pocket, reset, and throw the ball downfield. For Pass interference on the defense. Penalty will be declined. Play results in a first down. Two-year starter, Chase Maservi, the defensive back. You see Workman coming off the edge, but he doesn't keep him on his inside shoulder. Let's walk, work uh, Alexander get outside. Throws it downfield. Outstanding adjustment by Green going up, bringing the football down. You know, Green's been something of a possession receiver for Booker T. Washington, but got down the field well that time. First and goal for the Tornadoes. Alexander, end zone for Green. Second drive yields a score for Booker T. Washington. Seen some impressive passes thrown by the Florida International commit Maurice Alexander. He's really come out hot early on. And two big plays here to Shaquille Green. He's going to go to his left. You see looking. Just along the back of the end zone, there was just a miscommunication in the coverage as Green got wide open as they had Walton underneath to draw up one defender and allow for that space behind for Green. Here's a junior, Jose Borregales for the extra point. 7-0 Booker T. Washington. Got stopped in the opening drive on fourth down, but Bingham couldn't hold the line this time. Alexander to Green. And the Tornadoes have the first lead of our finale. Back to Boca Raton, 7-0 Booker T. Washington. The state of Florida has been a very, very fertile ground for recruits, and this year is no different. Still a couple of the top recruits in Florida 
undeclared and where they're going to play their college football. And Shaquille Green has the touchdown for Booker T. Washington, 7 0 the lead Justin. for the Tornadoes. Number 30, so Bora Gallus to kick it. Bingham's opening drive was predominantly on the ground. And Booker T. Washington forced a punt. From the five, Cameron Smith all the way to midfield. Finally dumped by the kicker, Borigalis. Bingham, they really feel strong, strongly about their special teams. And Coach Peck coming into this game knew that that was a unit that was going to need to play well. And he said that in the Bishop Gorman loss, where they took Bishop Gorman into overtime, their play on special teams was a big reason why they were able to hang in that game and give Bishop Gorman all they can handle, as we see Smith get a seeming great return, sets him up inside Booker T. Washington's side of the field. 47 yard return for Smith, who moved in from Cherokee Trail High School in Colorado. That's Green, the receiver in motion. And Garrett keeps it himself, saw something up the middle, looked like he might have called that at the line. Blackman, the stop, gain of eight. That was an outstanding surge off the football by that Bingham offensive line. That ball was snapped, and they had that Booker T. Washington defensive line immediately on their heels. I mean, look at the way they changed the line of scrimmage. That was impressive. It's a good way to put it, change the line of scrimmage. They won up the middle there. Gehrig lost his helmet, needing to cut man over his left eye. How about that? Ben Bolter, who's thrown 42 passes all year, runs the same thing. No worries. It, it's rare that you get a quarterback sneak that sets up a, a second and short. It's rare that you get a gash like that and a smile on the face of the person wearing it. Gehrig trying to staunch the bleeding. But it looks as though he'd go, he'd go right back out there if he could. Absolutely. Tough young man as he coming back. This is his first game back. Didn't get a chance to play in the state championship, but 26 and one as a starter. And off for Bolter on the ground, and they'll ride Cameron Smith. He's got eight more on the run. And this is the Bingham offense. They come in 13 and one. They're only lost 23 20 to Bishop Gorman. And the D, you talked about the defense. They've allowed six points or fewer in 12 of their 14 games. And, and that's the way they have won this season. So this is a very physical team. And for Garrick is out, but Ben Bolter, he's, a, he's the one who led them in that state championship game. So he may be the backup, but has some experience on a big stage. Smith behind the fullback, Porter Richards. Crashing in, needed a yard. Looks like he's got it as O.C. Rose, one of our impact players, made the stop. And good as new for Gehrig over on the sideline. He needs a, needs a cut man. He does. And now we see it. But look at what Bingham do. They are staying ahead of the chains, just powering the football between the tackles. Sets up a third and short. They're going to bring out the chains and check. This is our first measurement in the Burger King State Champions Bowl Series. At least in our two games. You, you were marking all the first. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> it's called the Smithsonian. 142 member schools in Utah, 20 sports. Merlin Olson. A notable alumnus of the state of Utah, and Bruce, among others. Bruce Hardy was the first high school player ever on the cover of Sports Illustrated. I remember him from my time in the Arena Football League. He had a career there as a player and a head coach. 
obviously uh, Merlin Olsen, not only a great football player, but also remember from the days of the flower sale. You buy a lot of those. <laughs> Third and short. Bolter on the step back, and the lefty uncorks at the goal line and completes. Well, now they're going to talk it over. They said incomplete at first. Tyler Topham was the target down there at the two-yard line. They're going to give him the catch. Uh, it looked like a catch from here. An outstanding adjustment as we see them go for the QB fake again, and Bolter just steps back out and delivers it up. And Talk about pinball clanged around Hudson. Yeah, Katra Katravis Hudson certainly got his hand on it, disrupted the pass. But you're right, it, it just kind of bounced around, never hit the ground. Outstanding concentration for the catch. And Billy Joseph was a little early, the freshman defensive lineman. We'll see if he was drawn off. On the offense, five yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay first down. Watch again. Look at the ball kicking around the legs of the defensive back, Hudson. Katravis Davis off his leg. And it just bounced around. You see right off of Katravis Hudson's calf. And right into Tyler Coppin's hands. Play action for Bolter. Trying to get by Mackey and couldn't do it. Dedrick Mackey, the sophomore, on a sack for 11 yards of the loss. Coming off the edge, offensive lineman could not seal him on, on the pole. He's able to bring down Bolter. Bolter in for Deering, who got cut off earlier on the drive on a run straight up the middle. Goal to go from outside the 15. Bolter to throw has a man, five yard line, third and goal coming up. It's Smith out of the backfield. He can catch the ball. It's his 27th grab of the year. It goes for 13. Absolutely. We talked about Mark Walton for Booker T. Washington, how well rounded of a back he is. For Cameron Smith, he, in his Bingham offense, he has taken on that role, really being a very well rounded player for them. You mentioned the ability to catch passes out of the backfield. You see seven touchdowns, also a dynamic runner over 1,300 yards. 15 touchdowns on the ground as well. Yo, watch out. They get the sack yardage back and they hit to Smith. You split out at the top of your screen. Quick throw batted down. Tyrone Robinson who had a nice run stop earlier and fourth and goal 18 seconds to go and they will turn to their kicking game and Shaden Johnston. As a defensive lineman, if you can't get to the quarterback, you get your hands up, and that is why, because the receiver behind him was open, but good recognition by Robinson. Absolutely zero push from him, but he got his hands up, and he still affected the play. One of the luxuries for Bingham is one of the top kickers in the country. That kick does not count. There was a flag before Johnston booted it. That's a tough angle. Short range. Dead ball foul, encroachment on the defense. Penalty be half the distance to the goal. Replay the try. Now do you go for it? A couple I, yards closer. I would still take the points with my defense. Mm -hmm. Playing as well as it is, one of the best. Caden Johnson, number 11 kicker in the country, Utah verbal commit. I think in this game, and, and, and you're seeing that you can move the football and you can be physical, I get points on the board. But then again, Coach Beck is getting ready to retire. Maybe he's going to roll the dice a little bit. Late night in both. Time out. <laughs> See if you can come up box cars. Time out. Big up. Especially, you know, considering he, he missed the field goal. And maybe there was a hitch because of the flag. We'll see if Johnston goes back out there. One of the state champs of the state of Utah, Bingham, with the only loss. 
out to Nevada. You can see Rich and Dixie and South Summit, Judge Memorial, Timview as well. The Utah State champs, Utah, Washington, Florida involved in this inaugural Burger King State Champions Bowl Series. Bingham has been the program that has really run the state of Utah. Saw Dave Pack 154 wins, 37 losses. His worst record in 15 seasons, 9 and 3. Yeah, he's done an outstanding job at that program. And Figured they had played there, uh, you know, he announced at the banquet it was gonna, he was going to retire so the players didn't know during the season and one more opportunity to, to play for Coach Peck here in the Burger King State Championship Bowl Series. And they will bring the offense back out. So Johnston hits the bench. Bolter. With the full house backfield behind him, including Smith, who gets the carry on fourth down, and he snuck in. Touchdown! That was a long yard, but with that offensive line and the surge they were getting on that drive, you could certainly see why Coach Peck decided to bring the offense back out in the field and he just a uh, straight downhill they just overpower Booker T Washington Johnson for the extra point and we are tied each team has done essentially what they do on the year Booker T Washington with the sleek offense Bingham runs it down the field sort of he slams it down your throat and Johnson caps off the touchdown drive Smith with the score and we're deadlocked at seven. Time is in mid-season form with his praise or lack thereof of Chris McCullough, his freshman big, off the big win out of conference. He'll take on Long Beach State at Cornell, then hop into ACC play coming up in January on the third. So Johnson to kick to Shaquille Green, who had a 72-yard first couple of drives through the air. With Booker T. Washington, the senior wide receiver. And the 20-yard line is the point where the Tornadoes will embark from. But if you're Bingham from Utah, there's a lot playing in your favor. Would you say you've got a coach in his final game, you have the opportunity to play high-risk football, and really in a game like this, there's, there's not a whole lot to lose. Well, speaking with Coach Peck earlier in the week, he said coming in there were two strikes against him. One was they hadn't played since November 21st, so they had a long layoff. Get a little bit rusty, but also allowed him to get some players healthy. And the other one was they had to come across country to face Booker T. Washington technically in their own backyard so those were two obstacles for them but they also barely felt confident that hey he said we're not going out there to lose we're going to go out there and compete Alexander a little jittery in the pocket hits Walton on the outside the running back split out but a host of minors over there including Simeon Montany, the junior linebacker, to make the stop. We're done with one in our finale. Bingham on the board with a touchdown from Cameron Smith. We're tied at seven, the Tornadoes and the Miners, Florida and Utah, in our finishing game of our triple header. Energy, so the, the parents and family members trying to get some of it out, put on their dancing shoes for the late night game. Seven all Bingham and Booker T. Washington, two top 10 teams in the country in high school football. Alexander drops the ball, the senior quarterback, and unloads a rocket incomplete. Down the middle, a strong arm quarterback, Alexander, as we take a look at some of the top recruits in this state of Florida, still undecided in the top 10, including Coward, Ivy, and Jefferson. Just we're not just looking at some of the top prospects in the state of Florida but really some of the top prospects overall in the nation Florida is home to six five-star prospects really if not one of the then the premier producer of talent in the country certainly up there with Texas and California as well as Georgia is really just deep pools of talent that programs from all over the country try to come and find prospects to help their program 
Nasio coming on a blitz. Alexander in traffic incomplete for Small, who took a big hit. Sometimes you'll see a marker on that with a defenseless receiver. I thought the defender did a nice job of coming in low. And hope oh, you got the arms over the head. Hopefully that's one of just got the wind knocked out of him a little bit. He did. I mean, it came over the middle and he left himself exposed as he reached for the football. Nice job, Alexander, crowding the ball. And you see the defender. Loco Tui. Yeah, he went low. He did. The ball did. was there. He didn't project. He didn't come underneath the helmet. He, he lowered the shoulder. And as you mentioned, as Smalls went up, number 19, Barquan Smalls went up to extend for the ball. He left that entire midsection exposed. And Loco Tui delivered the hit. And hopefully, uh, Smalls to get an opportunity just to kind of get his win back and catch his breath. And hopefully, we'll see him again. When you play that play out, there's not a lot anybody can really do. You got Alexander under pressure, so he's got to throw on the run, gets a little extra air under it. Small's going for the ball. Lokatui is playing the receiver and the ball. It's just one of those attendant negatives of Good to see going him. over the middle. Yeah, small up. Good to see him running off the field now. Good pep in his step. And Bingham will get it back. Punt time for Booker T. Washington. This is a physical Bingham defense we talked about. How difficult they have made it for opposing offenses to put points on the board, but this is a physical group that runs through the football. And they pride themselves really on on dishing out punishment. Cloward back to return the safety who's the interception leader for this team as well. Pressure coming and a big hit should draw a flag. Borigalis got hit. The ref immediately signaled that he was pushed, blocked into the kicker. Boy, it looked like Tafua came in on his own, but he gets the benefit of the call. Borigalis didn't like it. Just a 21 yard punt. You're going to get pressure. Coming off the edge, right up to mid, you see the block carried his momentum. Longi to Fuwa, right into the kicker, and as immediately, as soon as contact was made, you can see the ref right behind him signal that he was blocked into it. And both of them stayed down a little bit to see what the call may lead to, but it's going to be a first down for Bingham. Now, Borg Alex might know with that wry smile on his face. Somebody got blocked into it. Can't blame him for trying to draw a flag. Or there is at least a kicker in America who doesn't know how to at least work right. to draw that flag. So Dave Peck, 15th season, he'll send out Gehrig. The officials are talking it over here. First out. Very thorough group. <laughs> So Bingham ball after the short punt just outside the 40 yard line there's Gehrig back he was cut up on the last drive Bolter led them to a touchdown and here is the man who had the score Cameron Smith on the run for a short gain second down coming up and Bingham this is the type of team they are out of Utah they will run the ball and they'll run some clock and force Booker T Washington to spend a lot of time defensively on the field. Yeah, they just lined up in an eye of words. You don't hear a lot in football very much. A fullback, Porter Richards, number 44, leading the way. And early on here in this game, it's still in the first half, but Bingham, their offensive line has really been able to kind of establish a dominance. Firing off the ball low and really getting great initial surge. Counteraction. Terry Jefferson pried the ball loose. But Bingham is back on top of it with the offensive lineman Cole Clemens, the sophomore tackle. 
Big man, right spot at the right time as Smith fighting for yards. Results in a first down. You can see the defender come up and he pulls it out. Ter Terry Jefferson to safety, but then Cole Clemens, number 58. He's able there to First jump on the football and secure the possession for Bingham. Turns it into a first down from the 31. Here we go, Cavalier with the ball gets a yard. The closest man was O.C. Rhodes, the FIU commit. Good run stopper in the safety spot. Try to roll him out. This is a design run. But a nice job. Booker T. Washington is a difficult team to try to get to the perimeter on. And speaking with Coach Tim Harris Jr., he said they wanted to try to get Bingham going sideline to sideline and allow Booker T. Washington's speed to be a factor. They knew that if they allowed him just to play downhill, it could give them some trouble. Smith on second down and nine. And you talked about them running out of the eye. Typically in that sort of formation, you'll get three yards in a cloud of dust. But Smith on the year is over six yards a carry. He'll break the big one. Absolutely. And, and it's not only that. It, that offensive line is coming off and getting the type of push that he's able to get some positive yards before he's even beginning to get touched. He's already passed the line of scrimmage by the time a defender is getting their hands on him. He's picking up positive yards. And as we mentioned, you get two or three runs or four or five yards, and that equals a, a first down. Happens pretty quickly. Third down for Gehrig under pressure and hit by Rose. From the blind side, O.C. Rose on the pass rush and the lose two. Fourth down. Yeah, they brought O.C. Rose off the edge. And Gehrig did not see him. He just came unblocked and lucky he was able to secure the football. For O.C. Rose wrapped him up and brought him down. So Johnston on to kick, 44-yard attempt. Talented kicker, the Utah commit, Johnston from 44. Just missed it wide. So Booker T. Washington holds serve 7-7, under nine to go in the first half. Binghamton. And Booker T. Washington, top 10, only team from Utah here, and Dave Peck, the 15th year head coach, playing for his state. Um, this is such a great opportunity to be part of a game like this. I really believe that this will be the, the biggest game any team out of the state of Utah has ever played in, and obviously probably more people will watch us play this game than maybe ever before. And, you know, we look at it as an opportunity to not only represent our school, but also represent our, our state. Dave Peck in his final game. Cheerleaders are even here all the way from Salt Lake City. Well, it shows you how excited that Bingham and the community was for this game. The, all 15 cheerleaders came out and paid their own way to be a part of this. And when Coach Peck first got the call, he said it was during the season. And he had to ask his team and the community if they were behind this. Maybe the best run today for Booker T. Washington and Mark Walton just short of the first down. Nazi on the stop. And just going back to Coach Beck for a second, he, he said, you know, I had to go ask if everybody was on board because of the timing and the holiday. And everybody rallied around. He said, I had to put the, corp, uh, the horse before the cart, uh, the cart before the horse a little bit because they hadn't won the state championship yet. Keeper for Alexander gets two. And the first down, I mean, they haven't played for over a month now. That's not easy to do. We talk about bowl games in college football, but this is more than a month. They beat American Fork on November the 21st in a state championship game. That was the cavemen versus the miners out there in the state of Utah. The epic battle between cavemen and miners. First down for Booker T. Washington. Alexander to Thomas, the sophomore, and Hankey comes out at the 35. Looks like a, a hole downfield. One pitfall of downfield blocking. Got to know when to let go. 
He's up. And you got to know when to hold him too, right? <laughs> All right. You, uh, you wanted me to set you up for that, didn't you? Holding <laughs> on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of a foul. Replete first down. You're always, you're always a good setter in the volleyball team, right? <laughs> yeah. So they'll take the penalty, move him back to the 24. The first down and 17. They've got to get to the 41. Alexander had to get rid of it quickly. He has green and flag coming out again. Lokatui involved one more time. He's the one that had the big hit on small a little while ago. That was a great effort by Lokatui because he was getting held on the play and he, he still fought to get loose enough to make the tackle. It's a face mask. Face mask against the defense. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Face mask against the defense. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. And for the penalty. In case you didn't get the signal the first time, you get it the second time. First down and seven for Booker T. Washington. We've got a first and 17, first and seven now with the face mask. And Alexander to the fringe, showing the speed into Bingham territory. Hop through the tackle from Flowers. First down, Booker T. Washington on a gain of 21 for the senior FIU commit. A great play fake by Alexander. On a handoff to Walton, you're going to see the defense bite converge around and he just comes right around the edge of number 49 Longi Tafua for a nice gain and a new set of downs this time they'll ride Walton and Mark Walton down the sideline high stepping out of bounds right around the 30 yard line Jones the senior DB had to usher him out after a gain of 13 and now the explosiveness starting to show See, uh, he does a nice job just riding it, gives it to Walton, who's able to initially, there's not a crease there, keeps those legs moving, bounces it to the outside. Walton and Alexander in the state title game combined had a part in seven touchdowns, and they've had first down carries back to back. Longi had a piece of Alexander, and Nasio finishes the deal on the hit behind the line for a loss of two. Parker Workman also in there. Yeah, Longi did not bite. He got quick penetration, went right after Alexander. Came in a little high. Alexander was able to duck under, but able to disrupt the play enough before Nazio was able to come in and clean it up. Two yard loss of the play. Second down and 12. Game three of three. Florida has taken the first two with Trinity Christian, a win in game one, and Miami Central in game two over Bothell out of Washington. Alexander wants it all down the sideline incomplete. The official is reaching for the flag, and he tosses it on Ethan Erickson, the junior, impeding the progress of Green. Yeah, they tried to go deep to Green. And a lot of air underneath that ball before. No, but Erickson, I think it was the right call. He was a lot of contact before. Pass interference against the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Play results in a first down. Again, you hear play results in a first down in high school football. It's not an automatic first down on defensive pass interference, but here's a look. Erickson had the arms extended. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it was a, it was a right call, easy call. They took a shot deep and didn't get the completion, but did get the pass interference penalty. Walton hit by Longi across the 15, gain of five. Mark Walton, number 134 in the ESPN 300, a very physical runner, sets up second down and five. 
Good lateral agility of sword right there. He got past the line of scrimmage, stuck his right foot in the ground, shook a defender for a few extra yards. Look at two, he got a piece of him. Alexander veers outside and down he goes. Flowered to the safety spot, got a piece. Close to the first down line for Alexander, and it is first and goal. Alexander's really making Bingham pay for not maintaining containment. When you're a rusher coming off the edge, you have to keep Special that. Special timeout for a water break. You have to keep that quarterback to your inside shoulder and remain keep containment at the same time. They're not doing that. We'll grab a drink of water. 7-7, a halfway through the second quarter. 7 all Bingham and Booker T. Washington. The BK Scholars program honors Burger King founder Jim McLemore and is focused on promoting education. Last night, each of the six head coaches in the Burger King High School Champions Bowl Series received a $5,000 scholarship from Burger King to award to a deserving senior on their team. Up to $23 million in scholarships since the year 2000. A fantastic program helping student athletes from all over the country on the ground for Walton. How about him dipping the shoulder there on first and goal? It was a high snap. Nice job by Alexander going up and getting it, getting it into the hands of Walton. And you see how quick and decisive he is. He got downhill, bounced it right to the outside. And then, as you said, Jason, a nice job finishing the play. See Alexander bring it down. And, uh, he runs well. He's got great balance and leads with his pads. High snap again, Alexander corrals it, but nowhere to go. Nicely done by Jay Tufele, the sophomore defensive tackle. It's third and goal. Our coach said he's already gotten some interest, a couple of offers from BYU and Utah already for the sophomore. Did a nice job of just coming off the edge, getting flat down the line of scrimmage and getting the tackle. Third and goal. Alexander on the run, and he finds his way in. An 11 play drive. Alexander takes him in from short range. And an extra point away from a seven point lead for the second time tonight. Hey! 14 7 on the Borregales extra point. Maurice Alexander, the FIU commit. Takes him into the end zone. Booker T. Washington has the lead back by the Alexander touchdown. 14-7 Booker T. Washington. And here are the top recruiting classes in the country. According to Recruiting Nation, you can get these online as well on the Recruiting Nation website. Alabama number one all the way down to USC at the top ten. The Alabama working on potentially a fourth straight number one class. But tight race developing Florida State with a class led by two five stars George Campbell as well as defensive end Josh Sweat out of Oscar Frommel Smith in Virginia played his Booker T Washington team to open up the season and after an opening drive a strong opening drive first quarter for Oscar Smith Booker T Washington really laid the wood in that game and route to a 14 and 0 season high deep kick and Smith won't have a chance to return Friday. Some of the best high school seniors in all the land take the field in this year's Under Armour All-America football game presented by American Family Insurance. Action kicks off Friday at four. Six of the top recruits in the country will decide during our telecast where they're going to go play football in college. This is game-changing stuff for your favorite college football team. If you're not there, you're going to hear about it from somebody else. They're going to have watched and seen the drama. Don't let that happen to you as a football fan. Tremendous amount of talent will be on that football field. Cameron Smith trying to 
pick his way through and Booker T. Washington loading the box with O.C. Rose. Second down coming up. Outstanding immediate penetration by the Booker T. Washington defense. And we've had a few Booker T. Uh, Washington alum play in the Under Armour game. Matthew Thomas a few years ago, now at Florida State. And Chad Thomas a year ago, 2014, is a defensive end for this Booker T. Washington team. Gearing took a little off that time. Intended for Topham, who had that acrobatic catch earlier right at the goal line. Third down. Now, that's the type of down second and ten, where if it ends up being second and two, second and three, you can really take a play action shot. When you're behind the chains, it thins out your playbook. Absolutely, especially when you're an offense that's built on running the football. This is where, this is not where Bingham wants to be in a third and long. Does not suit their strengths as an offense. One for four on third down tonight for the Miners. Pressure coming on Gehrig on the run, trying to dodge Duncan, and it's incomplete. Looking for Parker Atkin, the senior, and it's fourth down on the way. There is a flag down. We'll take a look. This is not a shotgun team typically for Bingham. Well, it's on Booker T. Washington. The hold is. Get the official announcement. Or maybe we won't, but it is first down. Yeah, big penalty there by Booker T in the holding. We saw it in game two, Miami Central trying to put away Bothell out of Washington and couldn't do it in large part thanks to a high penalty number, including two on fourth downs, one on a fake punt and one on a punt that turned into a roughing the kicker penalty. First down for Gehrig, Smith and Richards, the fullback back there, and Gehrig to throw on first down, and he does have a completion. Hudson was trying to pry it away from Colton Livingston with his 27th grab of the year, second down and short. He's one of the returning starters from a year ago on his Bingham offense. A lot of seniors on the offensive side of the ball. We've got two underclassmen on the offensive line. Most of the starters are seniors, including the quarterback, Gehrig. Around the edge, behind his fullback, Richards. Gehrig was out of bounds, got slammed after tiptoeing out of bounds. Blackman was there on the stop, gain of five, but there have been some practices in between the end of the season and this game where uh, Dave Peck has been without Gehrig and he's been without Michael Green, the top wide receiver. They were out playing basketball. That's one of the things you have to navigate playing a game this late is there are other sports starting. Absolutely. And that's why when he got that initial call, even though as a coach, you want to take care of business first and win your state championship. But he had to start to put the pieces together and trusted enough in his team to stay focused to let them know that they were in the mix for this. Boy, Smith saw a hole and Jefferson absolutely clogged it up immediately. Smith couldn't get the ball fast enough, but Terry Jefferson for the second time is blown up an alleyway and run support. Yeah, he's a physical player. He's really been strong, as you mentioned, in run support. He's been really one of the more versatile defenders. I mean, to be a four-year starter for a program like this says a lot about you as a player. Gehrig and he's chucked out of bounds by Jefferson again. Gain of three, third down on the way, 2.21 to go first half and an important third down here with Booker T. Washington holding two timeouts still in its hand. You have a chance if you force the punt here to get one more drive if you're Coach Harris on the sideline. 
Absolutely, and it was a third and long, but a penalty on Booker T. Washington allowing Bingham to keep this drive al alive. Now they face a third down. Long pass just short of the marker, but a yard short to Morgan DeGoyer, the senior, with his first grab, and now you've got a choice to make. Yeah, they get a lot of cushion on that play. DeGoyer fell short of the first down marker. Obviously, they're back out here. We had to come back to the ball, dove, and grabbed it a yard short. So fourth and one, still 15 on the play clock. They could wind it down some and use the timeout. And there's a whistle. Well, your two options here is you have a very talented punter. Jaden Johnston listed as a kicker. His strength in college where he'll probably contribute at Utah is as a punter. So that's his strength. So potentially do you try to pin Booker T. Washington deep and not allow them to, if they're going to go the full length of the field to put more points on the board, or do you lean on that big, powerful offensive line to try to get you a yard as they did earlier in the game when they were down on the goal line? See what Dave Peck decides to do. Remember, he pulled the field goal unit off in order. 14-7, Booker T. Washington, and we will see what they'll do. Looks like punt time for Johnston. And they'll try and pin Booker T. Washington back. Number 11 kicking prospect in the nation, obviously hoping that he can pin them inside their 15, inside their 10. A fake. Fake punt, run it straight up the middle, and Bingham has a bunch of those in the quiver. They fire one of the arrows for a first down on a gain of four on the fake punt. Just snap it to the protector, and he just gets downhill. A good push from that group up front. It's Michael Green, one of the wide receivers, as that personal protector, and first down Bingham. What do you have to lose, right? As you mentioned, Bingham is a team that they're not shy about going for fakes on punts, and that was an ideal spot in the field. Deering on first down. Pocket holds up, and it draws a flag. He was looking for Tyler Topman, number 46. And Carrier Williams got a piece of him. Big piece of him. Mm -hmm. You can almost call that like a two-hand shiver. You learn that on the mean streets of Long Island. Hey, that's a that's an old old football term. Fourth penalty against Booker T. Washington. Is he just clear push? He tried to sell it as as though to look over his shoulder and say, what I do? Yeah. He's filling big shoes. Devontae Davis not taking part in this game. Talented ESPN 300 cornerback prospect. Top 20 safety in the country. Davis will not play today. Gearing to the outside. They run it to the short side. And with under a minute to go in the half, Kyle Gehrig gets a couple of yards, second down coming up. And an injured player down for Booker T. Washington. It was Tyrone Robinson. Now he is upstanding. So he'll come off the field, gain a one on the play. Second and nine coming up for this thing of offense. And we talked about Dave Peck, the head coach. He's going to part ways with the school. He's a teacher. He teaches driver's ed. He's got a power lifting class that he's very proud of. He says about 90 of the players on the team are involved in that. Clock's down to 47 seconds. It was at 59 when Robinson went down. You heard Dave Peck say it was 59. He's looking to get some time back. Mm -hmm. 
Now 55 on the clock. Is that what we call a compromise? It is. <laughs> it's democracy in action yet again. Second and nine. Glad to find a middle ground. Gehrig down the sideline for Smith and the touchdown. 25 yards. Those sweeps they've been running with Gehrig, those designed runs help set up this play. As they line up, got action going to the right, slipped Cameron Smith to the backside. By that point, by the time the defender realized what was going on, Smith already had a step and Gehrig delivered. Score that quickly. Dave Peck's thinking, you sure it wasn't 47 seconds on the clock? <laughs> They're going to get action going to the right. Something that they've set up with those previous running plays with Gierick, and they just slipped Cameron Smith out. He was all alone with the step before. Diedrich Mackey knew what was going on. It was too late. He couldn't make up the ground. Ten plays, 80 yards in 4-10. So they wind down over a third of the quarter on the drive. And then Smith out of the backfield. Worth every cent to get here, wasn't it? Absolutely. They were excited to get here. Their team of Miners been here slugging it out with Booker T. Washington. They've traveled well for they for have. Teams from Utah. Excited, proud bunch. They just have to hope that Bothell didn't leave early. <laughs> or else they don't have a plane to get back. They came together. Green back to receive. 40 seconds to go. And this bouncer kicks into the end zone off the hands of Walton. For 40 seconds, Booker T. Washington, two timeouts. This is a big play offense. So maybe with Maurice Alexander already having a strong night, maybe you try and chuck it down the field. And we've seen the senior FIU commit making plays with his arm, showing some velocity on his throws, getting outside the pocket, and creating plays with his legs as well, the ability to escape and extend plays. He's really been Versatile for them tonight. Then we see the touchdown strike to number six, Shaquille Green, and then some more plays with his legs, and he takes this one in on his own. Walton on first down. You know what might be most impressive about that group of highlights is, yeah, he's got good velocity on the ball, but the over-the-shoulder touchdown throw had nice touch on it. So he's shown really did a nice job throwing the ball tonight. Walton into open space. You see the agility from Mark Walton, the Miami commit. Toting the ball down to the 40-yard line at a first down on a 16-yard gain. Cloward, the three-year starter, safety, made the stop. We haven't really seen Walton get off too many long runs. We see right here, you see the vision and the ability, the lateral agility to make defenders miss. He really is. I mean, for a young back, what's interesting about Mark Walton was up until a few weeks ago, he was a 2016 prospect. He went from a member of the ESPN Junior 300 to reclassify to the 2015 class. And something we see a little bit more in basketball, not so much in football. But earlier on, an academics got a little bit behind. And as he got older, started to make up some ground. And this is something that he wanted to do, would have originally been in a senior this year and he went and found started doing some classes online went and spoke to coach harris junior and ice harris when he was still the head coach they helped him get into some night classes and he was able to make up the ground and just a few weeks ago found out that he could reclassify and graduate this year so a lot of hard work by that young man to, to make up some ground and be a part of this 2015 class and obviously a miami hurricanes verbal commit they got to be excited about 
this young man being in that class, also in that class, Jordan Scarlett, St. Thomas Aquinas, running back, talented player as well. So they got some running backs coming in. Duke Johnson today announced he's heading to the NFL. One more time, Walton, how low he runs. You are talking about that earlier, very low to the ground. Yeah, and he, he's not necessarily a, a, a short back. He just does a great center of gravity, low center of gravity, runs behind his pads, great balance, and it makes it difficult to get him down. It also allows him to absorb hits better, but really not take a lot of direct shots. And Coach Tim Harris Jr. said that Walton has been at his best in the second half of games. Maybe a little bit like Maurice Jones drew, so compact like that, low to the ground. Time for our Burger King School snapshot featuring Booker T. Washington, the Tornadoes from Miami. 40 games in a row in the win column, three straight state titles. They and Miami Central are the first two teams in Dade County history to win three straight state titles, and it happened in the same season, and they end up in the same place to finish the year. Central's only loss this year was to Booker T. Washington. Two teams that really have taken on the philosophy of iron sharpens iron and going out and playing other teams. Uh, Booker T. Washington this year went up and played Oscar Frommel Smith. They went and played Tucker. Georgia Central played Hoover this year. So both of these programs have, have played some tough out of state competition and welcome and relish this opportunity to finish the year with some out of state opponents. It was a grinder against Tucker, too. 19 to 7, the final score, lowest output of the year. For Washington, maybe one final play. Alexander on the heave for the end zone. And out of the back of it to close our first half in game number three. Well, Booker T. Washington has not trailed, but Bingham has come right back with a Cameron Smith touchdown. And we are tied at 14 going into the half. Two top 10 groups. Bingham from Utah near Salt Lake City. Booker T. Washington. Out of Miami, the Tornadoes, the Miners are at a dead heat after 24 minutes. We'll check in in the studio at halftime. Come back with highlights and stats. Our nightcap is a dandy. We're tied at 14. Washington each with 14 in a half number one. Thanks for joining us once again to cap off our triple header, Jason Benetti, Craig Hobbert. And you look at these two teams, Bingham might be the underdog if you're looking at it like that, but this run game in Cameron Smith has been very strong in the first half. Yeah, they wanted to come here and kind of make it a little bit of a back alley brawl, and they've done that with that big offensive line and their power run game. They've been very successful between the tackles and also using their senior quarterback, Kyle Garrett, getting them out on the edge, and it helps set up their final touchdown. Let's take a look at the highlights from that first half you mentioned Gehrig the quarterback Maurice Alexander on the other side the quarterback for Booker T Washington showing off his touch right at the goal line yeah the Shaquille Green and the Florida International Commit has really been very sharp here in the first half and there you see the power game on a one yard line to power it in from Cameron Smith and here we see Alexander get out on the edge and take it in on his own and this was a play here by Bingham where they brought Kyle Gehrig to his right Slip Cameron Smith, the running back, out of the backfield. He was all alone for a touchdown. They've really done a nice job of using that run game to help set up their pass game. There you see our first half stats. We'll check in downstairs with Dave Peck, the head coach for Bingham. Thank you for the time. What did you like from that first half from your team? Um, I like that we kept battling. Um, we fell behind there, and our kids just keep, keep getting after it. Um, I'm real proud of them. There's no doubt Booker T. Washington has all kinds of athletes out there on the field, and uh, we need to do a better job of containing their quarterback. To me, the 14 points we gave up were, you know, a, a direct reflection of him making plays on us. We got to do a better job of corralling him. Coach, coming in here, you felt maybe you had an advantage with your physical run game. That offensive line has really created a great surge at times. I mean, is that power game something you're going to lean on again in the second half? Yeah, you know what? For us to win this game, we're going to have to control the clock the second half, maybe create one or two turnovers, and do a good job of finishing um, when we get down there in the red zone. Coach, what's it like to be in your final half over on that sideline? You know what? Mixed, mixed emotions. I love these kids. Uh, after 31 years, it's been a, you know, a great journey, and um, I love them, and it's, uh, it, you know, I have, I have mixed feelings on it. Good luck, Coach. Enjoy it. Thank you. Dave Peck, the head coach of Bingham, are all the time. <laughs> 2,400, uh, the total enrollment for Bingham, 1050 for Booker T. Washington.
five state titles, four of them for Washington, three straight. And, and you talk about what Dave Peck has done. He's handing it over to his coordinator, John Lamborn. And so all of the coaches will stay. He's stepping aside, says he's got some business ventures that he'd like to tend to, giving up uh, the teaching as well. And he'll part from the high school. But we heard from him at halftime, mixed emotions. And, you know, some coaches would say, oh, I'm not thinking about it at all. Well, that's that's likely not true for anybody coaching their final game. It's got to be rolling around. Absolutely. We see him walking around, kind of high-fiving his players and hugging them as they get ready for this second half. It's kind of the opposite for this Booker T. Washington program a year ago. Tim Harris Jr. took over for his dad, Tim Ice Harris, who's now with the Miami Hurricanes program. And he's had an outstanding, outstanding season in his first year as head coach of this program. And talking to Dave Peck, coaching isn't necessarily out of his mind. He says he'd love to coach at the next level if given the opportunity. But if not, he'll go into uh, the private sector and see where that takes him. No chance for Smith to return. And Bingham will have it from the 20-yard line. So Kyle Gehrig, who was gashed up early in this game, came off, was tended to by the training staff. Ben Bolter, his reserve, took him in. And there you see, already with 24 minutes left, the farewell tour on the sideline for Dave Peck has started. Well, there is no more after this half, but he's got his team here in South Florida battling with one of the top programs in the country, Booker T. Washington. They're coming out in the eye, expecting to once again try to get physical and lean on that run game and use the pass game off of it. Cameron Smith. Boy, those holes close quickly. O.C. Rose, one of our impact players, along with the FAU commit, James King, will play on this very field if he sticks with the Owls out of Conference USA. No gain, second and ten. Exactly. Booker T. Washington got downhill, and they immediately made Cameron Smith have to go lateral. That's what they want to do, Booker T. Washington. They want to try to stretch these plays to the sideline and utilize their speed. They'll split out the tight end Burge down at the bottom of your screen. Smith in as a wide receiver, and they'll throw that way with Gehrig incomplete, looking for Cameron Smith and Terry Jefferson, the very active four-year starter at safety with the hit. It's third down. You know, this Booker T. Washington defensive line, at their biggest, they're only about 225. A lot of these guys at the college level would actually project as linebackers. So there's where you see the difference where a little bit bigger of an offensive line for Bingham kind of used that advantage, and we've seen them at times fire off low and be able to use that size advantage to get good push in the run game. One for five on third down tonight for the Miners out of Utah. Gehrig gives ground and whips it incomplete. Three and out to start the third quarter for Bingham and the Booker T. Washington. Offense will hit the field after the punt. Good start. Booker T. Washington saw Bingham defer after winning the coin toss and now Johnston back to boot. Should be good field position for Green and Booker T. Washington, an elite addition onto the line for Kent Sassine, the linebacker on the punt team. Booming punt for Johnston. Rolls all the way back to the 30-yard line. It's a 49-yard punt, no return. Nicely done to flip the field. As Booker T. Washington, the state champ in 4A the last three years. We already saw Miami Central in 6A, the state champion as well. And here are the Florida state championship winners. Trinity Christian in our first game as well. St. Thomas Aquinas, Apopka, American Heritage, who we saw in our opener. Uh, Torrance Gibson, St. Thomas Aquinas, loaded program. Apopka, number one offensive tackle in the country. Marquez Ivy plays for that program. A lot of talent in this state. Walton changes direction so quickly. Gets a block on the outside and trips his way to the 37-yard line. Boy, he is quick of feet, isn't he? Absolutely. And, and really, such a sure runner, too. He sees and he reacts. and Very difficult to corral as he changed field there. Really made Bingham work to bring him down. 
Alexander over the middle, nearly intercepted. That was Cloward, who has five picks already this year. Has great instincts for the ball, and it sets up third and three. Yeah, he was looking for number four, Darius Scott, over the middle. And they brought pressure, and a good job by the offensive line picking it up. And he's going to put just a nice job by Cloward undercutting that. And got his hands on his father, DB coach here at Bingham. And been a three-year start, as you mentioned, five in interceptions. First team All-State player out in Utah, leading tackler as well. Cloward is Alexander. Eight completions so far. On third down, Alexander overshot Scott off his back foot, and it's fourth down. Bingham has been dialing up the pressure. Able to disrupt Alexander just enough to not let him get set and overthrow on that pass. And Kent Sassin, number 32, was the one who applied the pressure there coming off the edge. So each team's had a drive. A buck 41 off the clock. And a timeout for Booker T. Washington. Two remaining in the second half at a 14 all time. That might come in handy. Punt return time for Cloward and Bingham out of this timeout. Far in the first two drives of the second half. We're tied at 14. Bingham 13 and one. It's only loss to the number one team in the country in high school football. Bishop Gorman out there in Nevada. Booker T. Washington unbeaten this year and 40 straight in the win column, but in jeopardy Let's right go, now. Kay. Thanks to Kyle Gearing, the senior. And Bingham as Cloward goes back to return the punt after a three and out for Booker T. Washington. Not the best kick that we've seen from Borigalis, a very reliable kicker. So we're tied at 14. Tim Harris Jr. in his first year as the head coach of Booker T. Washington. He takes over for his father, and it was a year that sort of tested his patience. You know, but I, I had great patience. And, uh, you know, I just had great guys around me. I was fortunate enough to keep our staff together, you know, from all of those years in the past. And then, you know, we had great kids this year. Our seniors did a great job leading, and they helped the transition for us. But uh, definitely, I think patience was the key thing that I've had to, you know, really focus on uh, learning this year. It's nice when you're having your patience tested and you've won 40 in a row, though. <laughs> Not a whole lot of losing film to watch took over on March the 3rd. First down, Cameron Smith has been the bell cow. Gets himself a couple of yards, gain of three, second and seven coming up as Bingham would like to shorten this game. Jefferson again on the stop. And speaking with Coach Tim Harris Jr. earlier in the week, he asked him about the transition. He said, at first, I wondered if I was ready. Then he sat down and talked to his dad, and he said, you've been doing a lot of these responsibilities already. You've been groomed for this opportunity. He said, after sitting down and talking to his dad, he, he knew that he was ready to take on this responsibility. It's been a great first season for him. Kept the train rolling. Did have a 14-12 win to their name. As that run goes to Smith again. Jefferson to stop one more time. Gain of three on the play. His brother, Treon Harris, quarterback at Florida. His older, another brother, Brandon Harris, played in the NFL, is currently with Tennessee Titans, was drafted by the Houston Texans and Tim Harris Jr., the head coach of Booker T. Washington, he actually made his name in track. He was an All-American track runner at the University of Miami. Athletic family. Talent. Roaming the Harris sideline. Third down four for Gehrig. Quick set, quick throw down to the 45 and a first down to Morgan DeGoyer with his second grab. It goes for nine. Nice job. This They tried earlier to hook up to get the first down, just a nice little hit by DeGoyer beyond the chains. First down, Into Booker T. Washington territory, first down under nine to go, third quarter. Bingham has never led in the game. Attack. Attack. 
Deering just got clocked. Oh my goodness, James King, the FAU commit, with a big wallop, second down. Yeah, they designated run, tried to lead with the fullback, Porter Riches, and as you mentioned, King got downhill. Florida Atlantic, as you mentioned, verbal commit. It's a young man I really liked on film. I, I think the I think FAU's got a really promising player in James King. He's just all over the field. Great motor. Where can he improve? Well, he doesn't have he's good, so he's got to continue to build out that frame under 190 pounds. And I think he's one of those guys, maybe a little better football player than he is athlete. Deering got hit hard, threw it high, and still ends up with a completion on the sideline to Parker Atkin. The senior wide receiver, his classmate, gets him 11. We see him getting Deering back out on the move again, giving him that run pass option and giving that stress in that defense because they've seen Gierick get out on the edge and run. And Atkin creates a little bit of separation and Gierick makes the throw. Hudson was over there on the coverage as they're checking on the injured Bingham player. That's Gehrig, the quarterback. He got hit low as he threw the ball. We have seen Ben Bolter, the senior quarterback, his reserve, run a drive and get him into the end zone as Dave Peck and his coaching staff will go out and check on Gehrig playing his final high school game. That's obviously one of the dangers when you, when you get your quarterback out on the perimeter. Good to see him pop up and run off. We'll have to leave for a play at the very least. And Bolter comes back out to play quarterback. Kyle Gierick was a player hurt in the semis, didn't play in the finals. It was Bolter who took the reins to help lead Bring it to the state championship in that game. Defense helped out quite a bit in a 20 to 3 win over American Fort. Smith meanders to the 29 to set up second down and five. They relied heavily on the defense, but it's not as though it's a defense only team. They can put up some points. What we're seeing here is the offense working as an extension of the defense. The defense has really been stingy. They've flown around. They've been physical. Then its offense has come on the field, and they've kind of brought that same element. They've been physical in the trenches with the offensive line. They've been controlling the football, and keeping Booker T. Washington offense off the field really helps the defense as well. Devontae Smith is in. Has a tailback there. We've seen Cameron Smith quite a bit. Javante Smith hit by the sophomore Sammy Laster. Third down, a little breather for Cameron Smith. Well, Cameron Smith, 16 carries. Javante Smith, just his 27th touch of the season on the ground. They've set themselves up now in a very manageable third and short. They have Gehrig back as well. Running the offense, so off for the one play. And he'll run it himself, going high across the 25. And he's got a first down, got hoisted up by Jefferson to move the sticks under six to go, third quarter. Number one, Jerry Jefferson. They've been racking up some nice yardage on these quarterback sneaks. You see, looks like Barry Bonds with it here on his left arm, huh? Step aside for our scheduled break of the quarter. 5.51 to go in the third. We're tied at 14. Bingham on the move offensively. And in the letters flooded the network. They said, <laughs> who am I can't be done for the season. We've got to have one more. Back by popular demand. After the cliffhanger of the Dallas, Texas area, who am I returns with a vengeance. He went to Bingham, attended the University of Utah, started 20 of 29 games with the Carolina Panthers of the NFL. We ask you once again, who am I? And we'll find out a little bit later as Craig Hobart tells us the answer that he already knows. Smith on the run, first down, Rose and Blackman with the stop. You know I also give my patented extra nugget. That's right. Because I look out for the fans. This Who Am I was also a member of Bingham's 2006 undefeated state championship team. The first ever state champion for Bingham out of Utah. 
what you didn't do today is fraudulently ask if you can add that nugget. <laughs> Usually you say, can I, can I add one more thing? <laughs> And folks at home have been through that ordeal <laughs> 10 times already. We know how it goes. <laughs> Second down, nine. Green to throw, and incomplete. Here come the flags. There's our second somersault tonight as well. Top them, the intended target, when head over heels. You're going to see the handoff and a halfback pass, and he kind of gets up in there and doesn't really give himself much space. Michael Green. And then we see Young it's an handoff contact. Yeah. I mean, uh, he was going for the football. But he did Diedrich stick the landing. Mandy. Yeah. Pass that appearance on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, play results in a first down. Uh, I tend to agree with you there, Jason. It seemed like they just kind of got tripped up. But the odd thing about the play was just how close to the line of scrimmage they tried to execute. And Michael Green didn't really give him much of a chance to step into his throw as he was getting hit as soon as he threw it. Usually you see a step back yeah. or a toss even on that play. It was a straight handoff. But it does get him just outside the 10-yard line. First down. Gearing straight up the middle. Do you think he's calling that at the line? When in doubt, quarterback sneak for five yards. Yeah. The last time he did, <laughs> he got cut up by the defense. Is that is that a designed call out of the huddle, or is he making the change at the line, do you think? In the second year that I'm sure they're giving him. Wow, the second time they've run that, and second time he's left with a, an injury above the eye. So Bolter back in to hand off to Smith, weaving his way into a spin move and down to the one and a half yard line. Close to the marker, they did have the first down possibility. Some tough running inside by Cameron Smith. Is as Kyle Gierick is, is playing hard, but he, he's certainly not going to get out of here without. That's kind of the look of somebody looking for a contact. That's what I was going to say. It looked yeah. like he was looking for a contact. You see Smith bringing up inside, just a tough running. Spinning and fighting through tackles to bring out the chains. It is a first down by a couple lengths there. So first and goal for Bingham and a sturdy rushing offense. It's up to Ben Bolter, the senior quarterback with gearing out. And if I'm Bingham, I don't get cute here. Got first down. Inside the two, I use that power run game. They do. Smith, and they're right on top of it. Tyrone Robinson at the word go. It's a loss of three. That quick penetration will blow that up every time. And Tyrone Robinson has shown a quick first step today. With at points, he's been able to get quick penetration. You just see him fire out, and stay low, and just shoot the gap. You see that flash of. A black uniform just come right across your screen. That was a big play for Booker T. Washington. Now it pushes Bingham back a few yards to the five. Time out, Bingham. So two left for each team here in the second half. About 15 minutes to go. And a tight one, 14 all Bingham out of Utah. Booker T. Washington from Miami. Level peg. Third quarter, and the suspense is killing us. I mean, <laughs> who needs who shot JR when you have who am I? From Bingham, he attended the University of Utah, 20 of 29 for Carolina. And there you see Star Lotulele, first round draft pick for the Panthers, won a state title with Bingham in 2006. Yeah, he was a dominant force for the Utes. From the five, second and goal. Smith for the third time tonight is in the end zone. Bingham has its first lead. Well, he 
initial running play got them knocked back, but they stuck with the run game and got Cameron Smith, and he just came off the left side untouched. Outstanding job of the offensive line. They brought in Daniel Longy as a fullback to lead the way. Johnston for the extra point, straight on through, and Bingham out of the Salt Lake City area, a 21-14 lead over Booker T. Washington. You mentioned the blockers that does a nice job coming and kicking out on the edge off of O.C. Rose and really just gave Cameron Smith a huge lane just to walk into the end zone. 13th place, 60 yards in 7.04 for Bingham. And it culminated with eight straight runs. And that's the ideal drive for Bingham. Move the football, put points on the board, but also eat up a large chunk of that clock. So now you're 307 in the third quarter and you shorten the game. Booker T. Washington, that spread offense, will now see the field as Johnson gets ready to kick it off. But Bingham. 13 and one, the only loss to Bishop Gorman, the number one team in the country, who we saw earlier this year number in 12, September. Back to receive the kick. Chip shot from Johnson and a fair catch. Scott thought about deciding to run with it on Watch ESPN. A lot to watch for there. Individual matchups as well. And you see skill sets develop in front of you. First down for Alexander off the puck fake. Down to three minutes to go, third quarter. When you watch something like that, this is really the last time you'll have a chance to see a player in practice. In college, you're not going to get that. In the NFL, you're not going to get televised practice. Absolutely. It's a great kind of peek behind the scenes. Get to know their personalities a little bit. It's always a fun part of the week for me. Check in, start tomorrow. Excited to get Under Armour week underway. Walton crashed down on, broke the first tackle. It's thrown back. Nacio got an arm in there. It's third down and four coming up for Booker T. Washington. And an important drive for their defense, wouldn't you say? Because Bingham gets it back. You never know how long that next drive is going to go. Absolutely. We've talked about how this defense and offense have really kind of played well together, kind of worked off each other. Each unit has helped the other. Now big third down here as Bingham tries to get off the field. Alexander to the sideline, has a completion to Scott. He's tripped up. By Messervy, the senior defensive back, gain a seven, first down. Alexander to Scott. And, you know, how things play out over the course of a game. You're going to see Parker Workman coming off the edge as well as first down, T. Washington. number 22, Samote Loco T. And they lost contain at times. And number 22 didn't come in with the same aggression that they had earlier. Looked like he was a little worried about the run, didn't he? Trying to he was worried about getting beat on the outside, and, and that kind of having that happen to them in the first half slowed him down on his rush there. But well, we heard from Dave Peck coming out of halftime, and he said just that, that sometimes on those breakdown plays, they were getting burned, and maybe that was a reaction to it. End up with a first down for Booker T. Washington on the hit to Scott. So second and seven after the three-yard gain for Walton. Right at midfield. Four-man rush down the sideline, a little too much incomplete. Looking for Shaquille Green, and a flag comes in on the play. Chase Missouri on the coverage. You know, watching that initially, Jason, it, look, take a look here. As Missouri is running with him, and I, you know it, he's arm barring him a little bit, but that, to me that's pretty good, pretty good coverage. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Play results at a first down. I mean they're both competing for the football, and 
I, I, I see the flag, but I, I let him play a little bit, too. You know, at the end of the play, he brought the arm down a little bit further and pinned the arm of Green. And when the ball is coming in, you're going to get more of a look at the arms. So maybe that drew the flag. I think so, that could be one of those agree to disagree. Walton. Oh, the explosion across the 15 and a first down for Mark Walton. His strongest run of the night goes for 24. You see how explosive the Miami commit is. He hits that hole. He gets downhill. You're going to see him. As soon as he gets the football, there's no indecision. He turns it up. You see some of that balance here as he pirouettes and then lowers the shoulder and delivers the blow on Good the night. tackle. Good night, John Boy. Gain of 24. <laughs> First and 10 from the 11. A little hesitation from Alexander, and he's dropped. Yeah. Simeon Matani, the junior linebacker, got in there. Alexander got caught in between, it looked like. Yeah, it was a nice job, Matani. was just staying at home, and, and Alexander got on edge. There was nowhere to go. And they figured they hit the big play to Walton. He pulls it. Good responsibility football there by Matt Second and 11 out of the backfield. Walton the diving grab at the one yard line. Erickson was closest, but a nice grab sprawling out. Outstanding. We talked about it earlier, Joe, how well rounded of a back he can be. He just, he explodes out of the backfield. His first few steps, he accelerates and a nice adjustment, the ball thrown out a little bit in front of him, makes a diving catch. Booker T. Washington in a, in a spot to respond. They're going to measure it. They could pick up a first down right around the one yard line. So the question is, will it be first and goal for Booker T. Washington? What do you think the ceiling is on Walton? He's committed to Miami. What sort of back does he become, do you think? You know, they've got a good group of running backs coming on. We talked about Jordan Scarlett also in that group. Joseph Yearby from Miami Central. Is, they get the first down off the measurement. And I think you see a lot in college football now. It's very few teams that rely on one featured back. It's more of a tandem. And I think with his ability as he grows and continue to fill out that frame, he can do a lot of different things and, and eventually maybe develop into one of those guys who leads the pack. It is that feature type back, like I said, uh, you'll see a lot more of more than one guy carrying a low, but he is so explosive in his first few steps and really runs runs smart, more savvy than he is for a younger back. Remember, this is a guy who initially was in a 2016 class, and Miami's going to get him a year earlier than expected. Let's see if they snap it one more time. They do not. And so we will head to the fourth quarter with Booker T. Washington right on the fringe of the goal line. 40 straight victories for the Tornadoes from Miami. One quarter to go. Bingham trying to pull off the upset from Salt Lake City. The head coach for Bingham out of Utah, he's announced his retirement as the head coach of that school 10 times the last 15 years into the state semifinals. But his team's now backed up into its own end zone. Goal to go from the one for Booker T. Washington. Walton up the middle, driven back. Did he break the plane? And he is just short. Of that end zone. Daniel Longy, number 34, one of those defenders coming down. And they, that ball did not cross the goal line. They did a nice job of standing him up and driving him back. They load the box. Walton can't pick his way in. He lost a yard that time. Lokatui was in there. Third down and goal. Well, he did it early in the game. Fourth and goal. Couldn't get in. Once again, you see this defensive line coming off the ball low, playing on Booker T. Washington's side of the ball, allowing those linebackers to get downhill. Another big stop here is now sets up 
third and goal. And we've talked about how stingy this Bingham defense has been all year. 11 opponents they've held under seven points. They had four shutouts. Now trying to maintain a seven point lead here in the fourth quarter. Third and goal and a timeout first. Timeout, timeout. Booker T. Washington. One left for the Tornadoes. 10.46 to go. And boy, over on the sideline, but Quan Small talking to his head coach, Tim Harris Jr. So we were talking about this. Booker T. Washington made its way down the field in the first quarter and had a very similar situation to this. So this is fourth down from that first quarter. Now you see the same thing, the defensive line, they firing off the football, they're winning the leverage battle. And not allowing it for the success that Bingham has had running between the tackles. Booker T. Washington has struggled more and that really that young defensive line. This is a Bingham defensive line that's three sophomores across the board. But they really feel that this is a, a talented bunch. Two of them already have reported offers. Now, three, three sophomores and then the junior has 16 sacks. Uh, it's a very talented line. Third down and goal. Play action. Alexander, end zone, touchdown, small. They couldn't overpower him. They went to where their advantage is, the speed, went out onto the edge. Rolled Maurice, Maurice Alexander out and was able to find Smalls coming across the back of the end zone. So the quad smalls with the touchdown. We're tied at 21. Booker T. Washington and Bingham. Alexander to Smalls for the score. And we're tied. And 10.41 to go here in quarter number four here in Boca. So the quad small, the wide receiver. With the touchdown catch, Bingham will get it back. And Kyle Gehrig, who's been knocked around and lacerated and <laughs> anything else that draws a little blood, too. I mean, he's been tending to himself quite a bit over on the sideline. And those design runs have been painful but worth it in terms of yardage gain and touchdown drive. So 21 all under 11 to play. Booker T. Washington's 40 game win streak on the line. Number two, Gabe Clower, back to receive the kick. Along with number 26, Cameron Smith. Back. Smith has not had much of a chance with Borregales booting the ball strongly tonight. So 21 all Bingham with its last touchdown drive. It'll have some 7.04 off the clock. This is a key time for Booker T. Washington to get off the field. Yeah, Bingham would love to put together another one of those drives, but we saw Booker T. able to respond or respond quickly. So I think the bottom line is there's still a lot of time left in this. Game knotted up at 21 apiece. Cameron Smith with three touchdowns to his name. That's a ninth straight run for Bingham, which navigated its last drive all the way down into the end zone mostly on the ground second down coming up smith hasn't had a big yardage night but close range to the goal line he's been fantastic very workman type effort tonight 
talk about them continuing to stay with the run and why go away from it when it's working and it could open up a big play here on this drive. Second and four could be a good play action down. Instead, they'll toss it running laterally to Smith. And that's into the strength of that Tornado's defense. Yeah, I, I think they've really done a nice job running the football and getting downhill. But when we've seen them try to get to the edge, they have had very little success because this is where Booker T. Washington excels when they can flow to the football and pursue. And there hasn't been much positive yardage for them in that aspect. It's downhill between the tackles or getting Gierig out on the perimeter in, a, in kind of a run pass choice to where their success has come tonight. Smith split out wide now. And that trips at the top of your screen. Gierig looks that way. On the slant, Smith in traffic calls it in. And he's got the first down across the 30. Blackman, the stop gain of nine. That was a nice throw here by Geert. You're going to see the coverage is there, and he's going to put it to the outside away from the defender, Akeem Jackson. Smith comes up with the catch. We've seen him be very valuable in both phases, both as a, as a receiver and obviously in a run game. Three catches, 47 yards. 29 catches on the year for Smith. This is Javante Smith, his understudy, the sophomore to the 40. Terry Jefferson, the great run support safety with a stop. About five and a half on first down, second and manageable. Nine minutes to go. Another great job by that. that Miners offensive line this is a group. They lost all their starters from 2013. This group came in, stepped in, really done a nice job in developing to an outstanding unit. Second down and four again. Keep the legs moving. Javante Smith, Jackson got him low. First down, gain of five. That was a huge hole off to the right. That interior of that offensive line really right now is just firing off a push of Booker, pushing Booker T. Washington back. And I know sometimes you want to try to diversify, but to try to get to the edges in the run game, to me, it, it seems silly at this point when you're having that much success getting downhill. You've been working on your portfolio? <laughs> First down from the 45 21 all Bingham in its final game for head coach Dave Peck, who's announced his retirement. Cameron Smith back in, lead block from Richards outside. Smith across the 45. First down in the arms of James King, the FAU commit. Cameron Smith, three touchdowns tonight. And here's a look at what he's done. Okay, he has really been a workhorse for them tonight, getting downhill. Doing a nice job of following his blocks and this one on the touchdown slipping out of the backfield on the reverse action then his offensive line at times has also made things easy for him and you got to give a tip of the hat to his fullbacks number 44 Porter Richards. Javante Smith, Cameron Smith over at the edge of the formation, giving three, just trying to keep Cameron Smith maybe fresh for the later moments of this game, running the sophomore Javante Smith. Absolutely, and you know what? When you when you got your big guys up front kind of kind of foaming at the mouth and getting things done, you know, it doesn't really matter who you put back there, as long as they protect the football, they're getting the type of push and movement that they're able to get three or four yards every time they they head into the heart of that offensive line. Clock winding, moving down to seven minutes. Play clock down to eight. It's the 40th run of the night for the Bingham Miners. And a shoestring tackle by Blackman holds up Smith after a short gain, third down, and about five coming up. Puts a lot of stress on the defense, 40 runs. Yeah, and you know, it's... It's difficult for a defense. One of the most frustrating things for a defense is to not be able to stop the run game. It, it's almost deflating when you're constantly firing off and you're getting pushed back, and it, it could be demoralizing as we're seeing. Third down five. Gehrig on the run, finds a save, and gets clobbered by Robinson. 
Gehrig all the way to the 33. It depends on the mark. Looks like he's very close to that first down yardage. And, that, and that's a call I love. Now, if you want to try to get out on the perimeter, do it with your quarterback as he picks up the first down. You see him just a quick rollout. He sees the seam good block, and he tucks it, slides, and gets a new set of downs. So the final water break in regulation. We're tied at 21. 6.15 to go down the stretch. Bingham and Booker T. Washington. Tied at 21. 6.15 to go. And so much on the line tonight for Terry Jefferson and Booker T. Washington. We've, we've gone on a 40-game winning streak. We've won state, you know, three years in a row. But basically this game means a lot as far as, like, if we, depending on how this game goes, anything else that we've accomplished in the past won't really mean anything because if we come out with a loss, everything that we've done in the past, state championship, that, all that goes down the drain. You know, it's wild to say that. They've rattled off 40 straight wins, but it all hangs on the line here. Bingham with a seven-minute touchdown drive, last time with the ball. Here's Javante Smith, the sophomore, the fresh legs inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be that that one, the group that lets that streak go. We just see the push and a nice seal from number 57, Daniel Nazio, helped create that crease for Smith, and they're going to bring another measurement. So really, Bingham comes out and kind of picks up where they left off. You know, we were talking during the break that that, that water break gives Booker T. Washington a chance for a breather, and then you piggyback that with a measurement, the defense gets to rest a little bit. Absolutely, because Bingham was really kind of starting to impose their will on this Booker T. Washington defense, and obviously the mandated water break gave Booker T. Washington a chance to regroup, but then Bingham comes right back out from that. Nine yards, sets up second and short. And this is obviously a situation and down to give yourself a little bit to play with as they're going to go into the, the shotgun and maybe try to get geared back out on the perimeter again. Livingston, the wide receiver, down at the bottom of your screen. Devontae Smith on the draw. And at 5'10", 185, he muscles his way for a first down to the 18-yard line. And this, you know, we talked about a little bit how it could be deflating for a defensive lineman. As for an offensive lineman, this is heaven. When you're just buckling the chin strap and you're just firing off the football, trying to push the guy in front of you back, this is what offensive linemen love for. I bet you they're in a the huddle saying, run it, run it, run it. Let's keep this going. Six late carries behind that line for Javante Smith. Now Cameron Smith, the tailback. They bring in Longy as the extra fullback. Smith behind Longy has a couple of yards down to the 15. Second down, but no harm done for Bingham, which has number one, a great run game, but number two, a strong kicking game as well if the field goal is necessary. Absolutely. They're already in field goal reign with Jaden Johnson, a Utah verbal commit kicker. But right now, setting up second down and still trying to power that football down now inside the red zone. One timeout only for Booker T. Washington. Second and seven, and Tyrone Robinson snuffs that out. A loss on the play. Third and nine now as they go behind the chains. Yeah, the Booker T. Washington D line fired off. And we're able to get some initial penetration and didn't let that play develop as for most of his drivers we see Tyrone Robinson down probably trying to catch his breath before this next play but Booker T uh, Bingham has really been getting off the football and before Booker T has really put a hand on a running back they've been on their side of line of scrimmage but that play they didn't let that happen to set up a third and long Green wants to throw and nearly intercepted over at the sideline out of bounds. Carrier Williams jumped it 
fourth down coming up. Dante Carrier Williams couldn't get the foot in bounds, but it forces a field goal. Yeah, I thought Green was just going to throw it away here. He hesitated, didn't throw it up, but at the last second, got a little bit antsy and still threw it. And a nice job closing, just couldn't finish the play. Johnston from 33 yards. And a timeout before the kick. So there was a penalty prior to his first kick, which never came. He missed that from 18. Encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. It's on King. James King, the senior linebacker, the FAU commits. So now, closer range, pick up five yards. Here's a look. Right at the top of your screen. King gets his forward momentum going. He's in the neutral Steps zone. Steps across. Yeah. Would be a 28 yard attempt, but. Now, this is a. This is a gutsy call here. He's a kicker very much in his range. Oh. Another free snap movement. Wow. It's Deontay Lynch. Dead ball foul. Encroachment on the defense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Play results and a first down. You can see how tense Tim Harris Jr. is biting his lip over on that sideline. Oh, that's frustrating as a coach where you have them in a third and long. And two offsides set them up with a new set of downs. It had that initial offside not come. Three points, but Booker T. Washington and Jose Borregales, they've got a good place kicker on their own, but a fresh set of downs with this Bingham offense. Devontae Smith inside the five. Down to the two-yard line, gate of five, second and goal coming up. Just one timeout for Booker T. Washington, which has won 40 straight games. And that's the other thing with those penalties in the first down. It allows Bingham to take some more time off the clock where had they had to kick the field goal, Booker T. Washington could have got their offense out on the field and tried to counter. About seven and a half minutes on the drive for Bingham. Ticking down to three minutes to go. Smith the deep back, second and goal. Cameron Smith tunneling through and stretching just short of the goal line. Jefferson and Rose together collaborated to knock him down. See if they go back there. You see Richards, the fullback, he's been leading away, and Smith, he does not go down without a fight as he tried to stretch to get it across the goal line. They, I mean, you really, it's, I mean, you can't get any closer. <laughs> he's a couple steps away. And if they could power it in here, that, it may have been to their advantage that they didn't get in. They're gonna burn a timeout here. Play clock hits one, 219 to go. Third down and goal, and if Washington gets a stop this time around, they might be using that final timeout. And not to put the cart before the horse, but if you're Bingham and you don't get in here on third and goal, do you go for the field goal? Let's find out around the corner. 21 all in our finale of three. And it's third and goal from the one for a Bingham team, which has run 32 plays after halftime. 26 have been runs. <laughs> Quarterback keeper up the middle and into the end zone. Bingham leads again. So Kyle Gehrig, who's been knocked around, cut up, bloodied today, goes low and gives Bingham 
the lead. Yeah. Center Joey Coletti just fired off low and got great push and Garrick just got behind him and was able to push into the end zone. A, a great way to cap off that drive for. We talked about Booker T. Washington winning 40 consecutive games. Bingham, on the other hand, has won 27 of its last 20 in the last two seasons. And Gary with his sixth rushing touchdown of the year, 28-21. Booker T. Washington, one time out left. That offensive line throughout that whole drive was really just a dominant force and played a huge role. In Helping to get that touchdown on the board now for Booker T. Washington, though, this is a program that's been in some some big games. They've been on the big stage. We'll see how they respond here. Last two touchdown drives for Bingham. We talked about the offensive line controlling tempo. Last two touchdown drives, 15 minutes, 29 seconds. That's that fit right into Bingham's game plan then, coming in. Our guys aren't giving this up right now. So let's get up there. Let's go rally behind us. Let's go right there. Right right yeah, Who absolutely. needs overtime? <laughs> but the defense has played their part, and the offense joined in and helping their defense with those time consuming drives. From the two yard line for Green. Pass to 20, that's all he'll get. 46 plays in the second half of this game. 33 run by Bingham, just 13 for Booker T. Washington. Yeah, their offense has just been dominant and just not too much pretty about it. Just some old fashioned smash, smash out football from the Miners. You know, we talk a lot about the glitz and the athleticism of guys that are highly ranked recruits and We've had a lot of them on our airwaves this year, but you talk about a team, maybe the team concept coming through most strongly for the team from about 20 miles away from Salt Lake City, the Bingham Miners trying to snap a 40 game win streak for Booker T. Washington. Walton out of the backfield has the catch. Deep to throw, now doubles back with some room to run. Across the field, Mark Walton to the 30-yard line and blocks downfield everywhere. Cloward was the closest. 156 to go, one timeout remaining. That was an impressive four-yard run. We've seen Walton do that a few times tonight. Reverse field and then Maurice Alexander, the quarterback, helped deliver a block to allow Walton to get around the edge and pick up some positive yardage. He found his way out of bounds, too, so clock stopped at 1.56 to go. Alexander in his final high school game, the senior, Walton as well, reclassified from junior to senior. Walton on the go again. Alexander trying to open it up with a fake to Walton. He's at the 34 and knocked down inbounds on the sideline. Erickson the stop. A nice tackle by number 14, Ethan Erickson. And he's a yard short, so clock still moves. He didn't get out of bounds. He didn't get the first down. Two chances to freeze the clock. Instead, 90 seconds to go. This is touchdown or bust for the best Florida has to offer. Undefeated Booker T. Washington. Alexander, couple of pumps down the same as a first down. With a dart to Scott, the sophomore. Really, I mean, good protection. He tried to work going through his progressions. Erickson nearly got a hand on it. Clock moving. A buck ten to go. Alexander fading back. Hits the sideline. Walton finds his way out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Shifty move in the fringe for the Miami commit. Mark Walton, the top 15 running back in the country. See now for Bingham to try to create some more pressure because they're allowing Maurice Alexander some time to kind of go through 
and find the open receiver. And if you allow that, that athletic group of receivers some time, they'll work their way open. Bingham bringing pressure this time. Small, the senior. Down to the 21 yard line, wrapped up by Longhi, one of our impact players, the senior with the hit. Under 50 seconds to go, one timeout remaining. Five wide, under 40 seconds now. Alexander off his back foot, looking for Green out of the end zone. Just a little bit out in front of Shaquille Green. And they're going to bring pressure there. Coming off the edge and just uh, Maurice Alexander. Just outside the fingertips of Shaquille Green. And Longy Tafu once again, he was, he was a defender coming off the edge. And, Trying not to give up containment, maybe didn't come in as aggressively as you'd like. Third down run for Alexander to pick up the first down. He gets wrapped up by Workman, gain of five, one timeout left, and they will use it. He did have a chance to have the clock stop to let the chains move, decided to burn time the timeout here. Booker T. Washington. So two top 10 teams in this game in the USA today. Sports Super 25, Bishop Gorman unbeaten number one. We've seen Dale LaSalle as well. Booker T. Washington in that three position. And number eight, Bingham, with the only loss to Gorman earlier on this season. 23-20, the final score in that on September the 5th, early in the season. And what a game to close off our three-game day here in Boca Raton. So now, Booker T. Washington likely has to go to the air. It would be a fire drill if somebody's tackled inbounds. 28 seconds to go. Walton in the bunch at the bottom of your screen. Farthest off the line, the key running back. Alexander, incomplete, nearly intercepted. Wow, did Longy have a chance at finishing the game? Five seconds off the clock, 23 remaining. And we've seen this Bingham defense throughout the game respond in the red zone. At a stop early in the game. Fourth down inside the 10 of the opening drive for Booker T. Washington, which decided to forego a field goal. Alexander with 23 seconds to throw. End zone. Touchdown. Small with his second of the day, and they're an extra point away. Do you go for two? You know what? You, you got the 40 game win streak and a little bit of momentum right now. They're bringing Borg, Borg Alice out. So Alexander completes the two minute drill, a 14 yard touchdown to Vaquan Small, who's got his second touchdown of the second half. Few errant throws from Alexander on that drive, but overall he did a really nice job of leading this Tornado's offense down the field. And you see right over the defender's hands, nicely placed ball. And you see it looking, he sets up, squares up and right over the top and small in position. So, this 40-game win streak hanging by a thread with an extra point pending. Borigalis, a very reliable kicker. The one thing you know is with Bingham, you give him a little bit of time on the clock, that is not 
their forte is of a, of a quick strike. Third touchdown for Alexander. Has him within a point. Borregalis off a high step. Knocks it through. We're tied at 28. Bingham ate up a lot of clock with this Booker T. Washington offense. We talked about it. they've been in a lot of big games. This is not this is not something new to them. And this offense responded with a little time and only one timeout going into the drive. Able to tie it up. Now remember Johnson on the Bingham side has a strong leg, the kicker. So if there should be a mishap on the kickoff, there's an open seam that gets him down the field pretty quickly. You never know, but Bingham takes over eight minutes off the clock on its touchdown drive. Booker T. Washington goes 75 yards and has spelled nine plays in a buck 51. That nice job just buying some time, rolling out. Shows good arm strength there. As they tried to bring pressure on him. And you're gonna see him just place it right over the defenders. And that was Dominique Jones, number three, the corner. And excellent placement. And Alexander as a passer has shown good accuracy on those short and kind of intermediate throws and delivered there with the touchdown strike the small. You wouldn't think they'd give Cameron Smith a chance to return this, would you? I would not. I would expect it. Poocher kick this ball along the ground. But or send it to Mercury. Yeah, confidence in Borregalis' leg to not even allow a return. So 18 seconds to go, no timeout. You should take it to overtime. If I'm Bingham, Bingham, yes. This is like I said, that this is not their forte. A, a quick strike, and last thing you want to do is, is commit a critical error. You, you've slugged it out with Booker T. Washington for four quarters, and on well, Dave Peck over on the sideline. We heard from him at halftime. He didn't sound like he wanted it to end. He's going to get at least <laughs> some extra time out of his final game before retiring as a head coach. At Bingham High School out in South Jordan, Utah. He's going to ask Gehrig to take a couple of knees or just one to finish off regulation. A little bonus football for you, Craig. You win. Yeah, yeah. Three games not enough. We'll give you a little bit extra. Here's the cherry on top to a great day of football. Well, Dave Peck, 154 and 37 in his career. This will be a memorable finish one way or the other. 28 all at the end of regulation. It's on Dave Peck and his Bingham Miner is number eight in the country in high school football to the wire with Booker T. Washington. And here are the overtime rules for this game. Coin toss, offense, defense, choose the end of field. Likely you want to go on defense first. One possession per team per overtime starts from the 10 yard line. And then the second time you flip it, you get the choice of defense. If you didn't have the choice the first time, third overtime, you got to go for two. And one, it could go 500 overtime. One of the interesting dynamics of this game is a lot of time at the high school level, Teams won't have a kicker, and whether it be a field goal or an extra point, things can get dicey. But both Booker T. Washington and Bingham have very good high school kickers. But we've seen a couple times in this game, each team has decided to forego a field goal chance. Oh, absolutely. But I'm just saying, a sure. lot. Not many teams have the luxury of kickers like Booker T. Washington and Bingham have. Because a lot of times you get in overtime, you try for a field goal or an extra point, and things can get crazy. But you've got two reliable kickers. So I don't see that playing a big aspect. But you're right. Both of these teams have turned on opportunities for field goals before. And I would expect both to stick to their, to their script. For Bingham to try to come out and be physical. And Booker T. Washington try to utilize that athleticism and maybe the passing game to get into the end zone. But once again, we've seen both of these teams and build themselves on big games, on big opportunities, and they both are used to these type of stages. 
Time now for a for Dave Peck gripping coin flip. Okay, guys, we ended uh, the regulation game in a tie. Okay, so we're going to go to a Kansas tiebreaker overtime per Federation rules. So just like at the start of the game, they can hear the visiting team, you'll call the toss. Okay. Again, same point, we have the footballs ahead, the official on the back is a tail. What are you going to call? Go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry? Heads. Heads. He's calling yeah. heads, and yeah. again, I'll flip the coin in the air, and if I drop it, we'll reach flip it. Okay? The call is heads. It is a tail, which means you've won the toss. You want to go on defense? Are you sure? 100%. 100%. Okay. Coach Peck gave you something to you think about. You get to choose which end of the field you'd like to play from. Play going that way. Okay. So, so Booker T. Washington will be on defense first. Win the coin toss. Good try, though. By yeah, there, was, was that what they called it a reverse psychology? That's right. <laughs> He's, he has won, won 154 games out of 191 for nothing. At the 10 -yard line. Here's how we got here. Back and forth they have gone. Bingham and Booker T. Washington. Alexander early on floats it to his classmate Shaquille Green. Cameron Smith, one of three touchdowns for him. Then Alexander using his feet. Okay, the FIU commit making plays, and then we see this one. Kyle Gierick throwing back to Cameron Smith, who has made plays both on the ground as a runner and in the passing game. And then we see Maurice Alexander roll out. Then some key penalties back to back gave Bingham a new set of downs, which they eventually capitalized on by getting into the end zone. And here's a beautiful pass by Maurice Alexander. Too small to tie up the score and send it to overtime. So Tim Harris Jr. in his first year as head coach, protecting a 40-game win streak. His team will play defense first in a game where we have seen no turnovers. A clean game, 28 all at the end of regulation. And again, each drive will start from the 10-yard line in overtime. In the second overtime, if we get there, Bingham will have the choice to go on defense. First, third overtime, if we get there, each team has to then, and from then on, go for two after a touchdown. And with each team getting a possession, obviously, the ideal choice is to start out in defense to see what you have to match once your, your team gets the football. Javante Smith is the tailback. The sophomore has gotten a lot of run late in the game. Cameron Smith, the featured back, tight to the formation. This is Javante Smith, a strong, low to the ground runner. Akeem Jackson with the hit. Jefferson in there as well. Second and goal. As you see, time not a factor here in overtime. And, and this could really, you know, Bingham in their physical nature through four quarters of wearing on that defensive line. Obviously, see that pay dividends in this run game. Smith again, absolutely lit up by Robinson. Boy, he has been outstanding in run effort on the defensive line. That Bingham offensive line is really dominated today, but Robinson has been one guy. who has been able to, at times, with that initial quickness, create penetration and blow up plays as he did right there. Sets up a third down. Green in motion, third and goal. Gehrig under pressure. Sneaks away from it for the moment, and down he goes! Akeem Jackson finished the deal in the backfield. A loss of 14! That's, that's, that was the worst case scenario for Bingham to get knocked back and make it a more difficult catch and he just could not break free and get rid of the football. As you mentioned, Akeem Jackson staying in pursuit, but you're going to watch Colin Livingston work his way to the back of the end zone. But Garrett could not work free long enough to get the pass off. So off the third sack of the day for Washington, a 35-yard kick for Johnston to salvage some points, and it's no good. 
A field goal wins it for Booker T. Washington. They, that's what was so crucial about that play. Not only that they stopped him, but they dropped him for a significant loss, making what would have been a chipped field goal for Johnson or a much more makeable field goal into a longer one. And for Dave Peck in his final game as a head coach, all he can do now is hope. Never had the angle. No, nope. you know, and very talented kicker, committed to Utah, but, it, you know, once again, not to make excuses for a young man, but his strength as a kicker is in a punting game and couldn't deliver there on that long field goal attempt. Alexander on the read option. Waltz it off the spin, gets away, past the 10, the 5. Strong run for the Miami commit. Mark Walton second and goal. When do you decide to kick the ball? I think with this offense, you, you, you want to keep it on the ground, but you have an explosive running back in Walton. As you see, nothing is guaranteed, so you, you take at least this down, and maybe on third down you kick it when you have the opportunity if there's a bad snap to kick again. Off the mesh and the read option. Alexander diving for the end zone. Touchdown! Booker T. Washington has won 41 straight in dramatic fashion. Kick didn't even come into play, Jason, as Maurice Alexander pulled the football here on the read. And got around the edge. You see him dive up and did a great effort from him tonight. Sneaks it over the goal line. And a great end to a first season as head coach for Tim Harris Jr. And <laughs> not surprising from the talented Miami verbal commit, Mark Walton flipping over the win. Total touchdowns for Maurice Alexander. And they do cartwheels in Miami. 34-28, the final score for Booker T. Washington. A triple header comes to a close. Bingham heads back to Salt Lake City with another close loss to another top three team. Bishop Gorman first, Booker T. Washington tonight to close out the year. Just a, a tremendous effort, no reason for Bingham as they take that flight back home to hang their heads. They really came in here and and, and fought to the end. And what a great way to end a, a great day of football here in the Burger King State Championship Bowl Series. A tremendous day, triple header action. We started at noon, and here on the East Coast, we end just, we say good night from Boca Raton.